Hi guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We are going to talk about systems of forces today and a couple moments and how we can take a system or something, perhaps a beam or a, a post or something like that, with multiple forces acting on it and translate all of those forces into a single moment and a resultant force, all right? So that is the goal of this question here. Okay, so we in the last videos we, uh, we, we showed you how to find the resultant forces. In this video we're going to show you how to take all those forces, translate them to a point, and then at that point calculate the resultant moment or the couple moment, okay? So let's go ahead and start. And this question is asking us to replace the force system acting on the beam by a resultant force and couple moment at point O. Okay, so this is point O right here. This is the origin, okay? And we have a 200 pound force to the right, 150 pound force going up, acting up here, and a 300 pound force, all right? And my sketch is a little bit off here, but this 150 pound force is acting right here at that two foot marker. All right, so well, how do we start? How do we start these types of questions? This is what you're going to see in strengths one, it's going to be the first part of the course and it's going to translate directly into strengths two when we start dealing with that. Uh, you can see some of those videos when we start dealing with columns and kind of that kind of, uh, that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do first is we're going to resolve all of these forces into a single force, okay? So, and a single resultant force. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And that's the first part of, of solving any problem like this, all right? So let's go ahead and let's resolve each force in terms of its x and its y components, all right? So I'm not gonna write out each force in each x and y. We're past that right now. I'm gonna do it all in one step. And we are going to start with the x force, okay? So what we have a 200 pound force here and it's just in the x direction, okay? So I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x direction or the resultant, okay? and we're going to say that right is positive, is equal to, okay, we have that 200 pound force here. And up here we have the 150 pound force, it's going in the negative x direction, so we'll go ahead and we'll right off the bat start with the negative sign. And if you'll remember from the last video, when we're given a triangle, in this case it's a three, four, five, if we want to resolve the x component of this force, we're just going to multiply or divide the x component of this little triangle by the hypotenuse and then multiply that by the force. So we have 150 pounds times four over five. Very good. And let's resolve the 300 pound force in the x direction. All right, and we have, once again, we're going to draw our triangle, which is going to assist us in visualizing, right? It's important in these problems to visualize what we're looking to find so we don't make silly mistakes. So in this case, we're going to be looking for the green portion of the little triangle here and we're going to use cosine because it's the adjacent side of the triangle. So we are going to multiply 300 by cosine 30. All right, and if we add all of these up, we are going to get, we should end up with 339. Point eight one pounds of force acting in the x direction. Okay, so the result, the x component of the resultant force is equal to 339.81 pounds. Perfect. Let's go ahead and resolve the y component of the resultant force. So we can say the sum of all of the components of the resultant force where we have positive direction as upwards Let's go ahead and look at the 200 pound force here. There is no Y component of this, so we can just skip that. Moving to the next one, we have 150 pounds, and that is acting upwards. As we know now, we're going to multiply 150 by the, pot, the Y component of the triangle divided by the hypotenuse. And finally, we have a 300 pound force here, and we're looking for the purple line here, uh, the purple component of the triangle and that is going to be 300 times sine 30. Okay. And well, what does that give us? Let's go ahead and calculate that. OK, 
Okay, that's going to equal 240 pounds, and that is acting upwards, all right? And let's just go ahead and dictate which direction that's acting in as well. Okay, so what we've done is we've found the resultant forces, the components of the resultant forces. So we need now to find the magnitude of the resultant force, okay? So, how do we do that? Well, we did that in the last video. We're just gonna use Pythagoras, okay? So, uh, imagine this as a triangle where we have the positive portion of the triangle here, okay? And that's going to be our FRY, okay? And we have the X component, all right? And that is going to be our F R X. All right, so we have two vectors here, and we are going to find the resultant of those vectors. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use Pythagoras. Okay, we're going to find the hypotenuse essentially. So that is going to reside somewhere in this region here. Okay, and if we go ahead and find the magnitude of the resultant force, all right, that is going to be equal to. 339.81 squared plus 240 squared and that will give us four hundred and sixteen pounds all right so we've gone ahead and we found the magnitude, okay? So FR, which is this vector here, is 416 pounds. Now we do, are we all, well, we have to find the direction as well, okay? So we need to find this direction, theta. And like we did before, okay, we're just going to use uh, our tan, the, the, the trigonometric uh, rules here. And we are going to use opposite over adjacent. So we have this component as well the same, okay? That's our y, which is our opposite. So we have, where's our y? It's right here, 240, divided by our x, which is our adjacent, 339.81. And if we tan inverse that, right, theta is equal to 35.2 degrees that is measured from the x-axis. Okay, so, well, we've done the first part of the question, okay? What we've done is we found the resultant force of these three forces, okay? And what we can do now, all right, with this, is we can translate, you can take any force, okay? This is kind of like a property um, of, of vectors, is you can take the force and you can translate it to any point, okay? So you can take this force and you can move it. Okay, but also what you need to consider when you've moved that force is the moment associated with that force. Okay, so if I take this 200 pound force and I move it down here, okay, I also need to consider that at that point, this force was exerting a moment. Okay, a, a, a moment, a force moment, all right? And what a moment is, okay, a moment is, and I'm sure we know this from high school, is the perpendicular distance, okay, a moment, is force times distance, okay? So it's a force times the perpendicular distance to some point. So what we're going to need to do, all right, in, or, in, in uh, as well as find the resultant force is we need to find the moment, okay, the couple moment at point O that was, that was attributed to all three of these forces. So how do we do that? Well, that's pretty simple. All we need to do is we need to take the perpendicular distance, okay, of each force, or the x component of each of these forces, and we need to multiply them by the distance to the point O, all right? And that pretty much, that's, uh, that's all we need to do to finish this problem. So, let's go ahead and do that, and how are we gonna start? Well, we can start with 200 pounds, okay? So let's go ahead and start with 200 pounds, and we're, okay, we're going to say that the sum of the moments, okay, about, we'll say 0.0, okay, and we'll say that 
pick this direction, which is, we'll say that counterclockwise is our positive direction, which is a very common uh, convention for moments. All right, and we're going to take this 200 pound force. Now, as we can see, this 200 pound force is acting in the clockwise direction. So that's going to be a negative moment. And we're going to take this 200 pounds, we're gonna multiply it by the distance, which is going to be 200 okay, pounds times two feet. Perfect, simple as that. Now, let's move over to 150 pounds, okay? So we have 150 pounds. See, as we can see, this is going to be moving in the counterclockwise direction. So that's going to be a positive sign. Now, the definition of a moment, okay, is it's the force multiplied by its perpendicular distance, okay? So what we need to do is we can't just take 150 and multiply it by four feet. We need to resolve this force into its X component, okay? Because that is how we calculate the moment. So since we have a th three, four, five triangle, we can find easily the X component of 150, okay? Which is 150 times four over five. And we can multiply that by the distance from the point of the force of the beam on the beam to the origin. And that is going to be four feet, as we can see. Very good. Finally, we have the 300 pound force at the top, all right? That is, once again, acting in the clockwise direction, which is going to be negative according to our sign convention. And if we resolve the X component of this force, the green line there, that's going to be 300 cosine 30. Okay. And if we go ahead and multiply that, and I'll just write that below, times the distance to the origin, or the point where we want to translate all of our forces, that's going to be times six feet. Perfect. And well, what's left to do here? Simply add up the, the moments, okay, that we've equated here. And just go ahead and do that right now. And we should be left with a moment of negative 1,478.8 pounds feet. Remember the units of a moment, okay, is always a force unit multiplied by a distance unit, okay? It's not divided by or anything like that because the question will then be wrong, okay? And what does this negative sign mean? Okay, well, it, it, it all depends on what we assigned as the positive direction for our moment at the beginning. Okay, so counterclockwise, we consider it to be positive, okay? If we consider count clockwise to be positive and our answer is negative, that means that we can rewrite it saying that the moment being exerted is in the clockwise direction, if that makes sense. So we have 1,478.8 pound-feet. Okay, clockwise, okay, in the clockwise direction. Or we can rewrite that as 1.48 kip feet, okay, because kip is a thousand pounds and in the clockwise direction. And we have the resultant moment, okay, about 0.0. All right, very good. So, and I'll just box that in. So that's pretty much what the question has asked for, okay? We've uh, translated these forces. We've taken these forces and we've translated them to the origin. And what we've taken with those forces is the moments that those forces were exerting on the beam, okay? So we've created a couple moment uh, at, the, uh, at the origin there, okay? So this is what the question's asked for. We've got the resultant force, we've got its direction, and we have the couple moment. And that's it, that's, that's really all it is. Not too, not too difficult. A lot of uh, kind of sign conventions and little tricky stuff that you uh, don't wanna make a mistake on on a test. But if you're fine with all that and you practice questions exactly like this, you should get 100% on the midterm. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more.